Who is Jennifer Griffin? She's wh- wh- what is her title? She's like their national security reporter. Okay, their national security reporter. From you know Fox. how Fox News has to have like one really serious reporter every couple of years that like I guess lets them keep that news title in the in their name, Fox News. I, that, that's like her job right now, I guess. But we do know Victoria Newland admitted that that labs existed. What exactly they're for? We never got clarity on. Correct. Well, we do have clarity. I have a, a fact sheet. And that's what I was just reading from from here at the Pentagon. And it is a long program that has existed where the Pentagon has partnered with these uh, these bio labs. These were Soviet era labs that remember the Nun Lugar bill and trying to deal with proliferation when the uh, when the Soviet Union ended. That is part of this effort to try and clean up those Soviet era labs and make sure that nothing uh, escapes from those labs. And so the U.S. has been very open about its involvement there with that. But what Russia does is they take that information, distort it, turn it around, and turn it into disinformation. And that is what has U.S. government officials concerned, because often they will do that. They lay the groundwork for that. You heard the foreign ministry spokesman, uh, Maria Zakharova, speak about that today from the Kremlin. And then what, what the Pentagon is concerned about is that that may be a pretext for a false flag operation involving one, bio one or more chem question. weapons. Mm. Um, the, the weird thing about this is that, you know, on one hand, she's like, I know I have a fact sheet from the U.S. government that uh, clarifies everything. But of course, you're also basing the awareness of the existence of these labs on the U.S. government, uh, too. Right. I mean, so this is not it's not like we're getting any of this information is coming from some type of like independent uh, source. But it seems to me um, that there's no evidence of any facilities that are developing this stuff. It's just these uh, labs that are, you know, uh, that and it make would make a lot of sense that we have legacy uh, Soviet labs there in the same way we had at one point so, uh, legacy Soviet nukes there, uh, which were um, uh, dealt with in um, uh, not in, in the early nineties. Uh, Ukraine decided to, you know they agreed to give up their nukes, um, but uh, this is now what the basis of conspiracy theories in 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 what what's going on with that, Matt. All right. Yeah. All the, you know, the the COVID conspiracy theorists and and QAnon have been latching on to this ever since it came out a couple of days ago. Uh, And, and, you know, you're right. Obviously, we should question what the framing is from the U.S. government. But uh, if you're going to make like a a claim like the conspiratorial uh, folks are making, uh, you need to base it on uh, some sort of proof. Otherwise, you are just a conspiracy theorist or not, not even proof, some sort of claim. You know, there, there's ostensibly people who've worked at these facilities. Um, I, I guess a like very closely guarded secret, I guess, in, in war and everything, and no one's coming out and saying anything. Um, you know, but to just wildly make up these claims, uh, that's, that's, I mean, you need to show something, show something to base why you're believing this. Brandon, what's your perspective on, on the U.S. government saying that they're concerned about a false flag? Because on some level, like, you know, um, and I think it's very important to have a, a healthy dose of skepticism. But my sense has been from the beginning that the Biden administration, at the very least, and maybe it's just the Biden administration, uh, uh, the other aspects of the, the foreign policy establishment, I think maybe not don't have the same reluctance. But I don't think they ever wanted this conflict to uh, to take place. I don't think they ever saw any value in it whatsoever. Um, the. Um, the warnings they were putting out beforehand, um, I don't I, I, I find it very hard to believe were uh, the catalyst for this invasion by uh, Russia. They um, they put out that warning about a false flag thing. And we saw some evidence of, of, of an attempt at that. Um, and I don't think they put that out as some type of like mechanism to pave the way of u.s involvement they've been very 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 reluctant about as reluctant as you can be with these images out there to get involved i mean what's your sense about the warning that they're anticipating a potential false flag type of situation with um bioweapons because it, it seems to me that the russian strategy here is make civilians pay as great a price as possible so that they capitulate 
Well, when it comes to the idea of a false flag, just generally, I mean, that's another tool of warfare that has been used in the past, and it's possible. I mean, America has used it in the past uh, with the Gulf of Tonkin or, uh, you know, various other circumstances in which we've gone to war based on false premises. You know, well, for me, I th- um, yeah, I think... Okay, go ahead. Go ahead. Sorry. I was going to say, I think, you know, to the ultimate, to your overall point, whether or not uh, the, I don't say the deep state, but whether or not like the powers that be rather wanted the invasion of Ukraine to happen is, you know, up in the air. I think the outcomes of what a Russia invading Ukraine, more broadly speaking, lead to or something that they wanted. You know, they want the expansion of NATO. They want sort of, you know, and some people in our, our sort of some people in our administration want the revival of the Cold War, the state of the Cold War that they are more used to in the, the, their heyday. You know, they want Germany to increase their military spending. They want, the, you know, the military industrial complex to have more money. There is a lot of opportunities involved in the, you know, in like the anxiety that war in Ukraine uh, due to the invasion of Russia causes. But the exact idea that they were trying to manufacture it, you know, that seems to be a step too far. It's the exact, you know, it's, it kind of puts us back into sort of like, who did 9-11? Was it Bush or was our military, you know, our military and our national security state just excited about the prospects of what a 9-11 style event would occur, you know, would mean for United States of America and took full advantage of that. So, you know, when it comes to the idea of the possibility of a false flag by Russia on Russia with bioweapons, you know, I, I, I hesitate to make any predictions because that's the kind of thing that you can never predict. You know, there might be a false flag, there might be an actual bioweapon attack, there might be none at all. And you know, at that point, it becomes imperative for us to just take a general sort of anti-war diplomatic stance because you know, in the presence, regardless of whether they're the bioweapon attack, kind of like you know, Obama's red line in Syria, you don't want to put yourself into the corner where you say, if a bioweapon attack happens, we're going to step in, or you know, if it happens, it makes Russia's invasion of Ukraine okay, or like you know, any thing other than in my opinion like okay well even if a bioweapon attack were to happen we would be attempting to de-escalate the situation provide you know rescue source you know rescue uh, workers provide aid in a non-military sense uh you know because ultimately that's just not something we have access to the full information of and i think that's what conspiracy theorists and conspiracy uh, minded people often fall back on like there is just so m- much information that we will never have access to to make a full 100 you know true determination of what ha- will happen what has happened or what could happen you know until it ultimately does and even then there's often a chance that we're not going to be fully privy to all that information so you know we have to f- stake out a position that's more aligned with a uh, general de-escalation yeah i agree I should also I should also bring up here that um you know the idea that these are like some sort of secret bio labs that were like discovered when this war happened like the like Russia discovered them as they were invading Ukraine uh, it's just not true too because um uh in 2013 Barack Obama you mentioned Barack Obama uh uh, Brandon, he gave a speech honoring Republic, former Republican Senator Richard Lugar of Indiana, who had worked for decades on the uh, the these uh, negotiating in a uh, deal for the U- for USA to go to Ukraine to improve security at facilities where dangerous microbes are kept. These were weapons after the end of the Soviet Union, and um, there's articles dating back. Uh, I see one right here from 2005 about. Uh, Luger's work in this area, destroying these, um, the things that were kept in these facilities. Yeah. I mean, I mean it seems if the, if the American government is trying to, um, uh, keep it under wraps, bad idea to testify about them in public in a uh, Senate hearing. That's just like a, a poor form. Um, that's not, uh, what do they call that? Poor trade craft. You know, it's also one of those things where, like, to a layman, what's the difference between a biological research lab and a biological a research lab with the capability of weaponizing biological, uh, you know, weaponizing viruses? You know, that's one of those things, again, that conspiracy theorists like to rely on, which is that you have just enough information to make 
uh, radical determination, but not enough for like actual context, including your own education to be able to determine the difference. I mean, there's no difference between like that and when we say that Iran is working on a facility to be able to make a nuclear weapon and they you know, counteract like, no, we're working with nuclear power. Like it's we're relying on the idea that these two things can be interchangeable in the mind of, the, of a populace, you know, a global populace in, you know, making what could be or is a benign exercise that most states have to understand undergo to like no do viral research, to do nuclear power research, into like an inherently malicious act that a state is just not allowed to undergo due to some kind of, you know, theoretical possibility of weaponize it due to like their big, you know, their own unique qualities as Ukrainian or Iranian.